Hey, and hey. Until proven otherwise, chronic anemia in menstruating females is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, not heavy menstruation. Now, I know I'm just a low OBGYN and not a hematologist or a chiropractor. And it's been about a decade since I've been medical school where I learned these things, but there's a very simple way that you can start to figure out where your anemia is coming from. As an OBGYN, I stick to what I know. So when I have a patient who gets a CBC that shows that they're anemic, so their hemoglobin is low, the next thing I look at is their MCV. Because this is a fairly simple way that you can tell if you have microcytic anemia, which is the most common type of anemia out there, or macrocytic anemia. Microcytic is often due to blood loss, and macrocytic is often due to nutritional deficiencies. Now with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, most often you're gonna have normal lab values. And if you do have abnormal values, you're gonna have macrocytic anemia, which is different than microcytic anemia, which you're gonna get most often from blood loss. Blood loss anemia is one of the most common causes of anemia. And really heavy menstrual bleeding is gonna cause one fifth to two thirds of iron deficiency anemia. Check me on this, come back and tell me that I'm wrong. Well, you're not right. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth most often has normal lab values, so you're not going to be anemic. And the most common causes of anemia are iron deficiency, most often from heavy menstrual bleeding. It doesn't do you any good as a patient to just assume you have a disease instead of doing the appropriate workup and really understanding the pathophysiology of your labs. But I'm just a simple OBGYN.